It was June 1859. A lone carriage struggled across northern Italy. The gentleman inside, the Geneva merchant Henri Dunant, was on important business. He was determined to be given an audience by Napoleon III, the powerful emperor of France. Dunant knew that Napoleon was now somewhere nearby with his troops. Dunant suddenly found himself in the midst of a battlefield. Dunant was horrified. Outside the normally quiet village of Solferino, the French and Austrian armies were fighting a terrible battle. By evening, thousands lay dead, dying and wounded. But the medical troops simply could not cope and the weary and bloodied soldiers on both sides had enough to do just saving themselves and finding their way back to their lines. Dunant forgot all else. Help was crucially needed. Resolutely, he set up a makeshift hospital in a church in the village where the dying and wounded could receive attention and care in peace and quiet. He was joined by the villagers, the women, the elderly, who tried to help as best they could. They treated the French and Austrians alike, even taking care to record and send their last goodbyes to loved ones. Day and night, they worked tirelessly, nursing the victims, Dunant finally returned to Switzerland, but he could not forget. His book, A Memory of Solferino, was published in 1862. Dunant proposed the establishment in every country of a neutral, independent body of helpers who could provide protection and care for the wounded in case of war, regardless of side. The idea was revolutionary and had found willing ears. Shortly afterwards, Dunant and four other men formed the International Committee of the Red Cross, the ICRC. In 1864, an international diplomatic conference in Geneva was called. The result was the adoption of the first Geneva Convention for Neutral Humanitarian Aid and Protection for Wounded Soldiers. Many years later, following the First and Second World Wars, other visionaries added more Geneva Conventions. These help protect wounded, sick, or shipwrecked sailors, prisoners of war, and civilians affected by war. But it was Henri Dunant whose initiative and enterprise paved the way and made a difference, showing humanity amidst inhumanity. There are now nearly 200 states signatory to the Geneva Conventions, a core part of International Humanitarian Law, or IHL. It is still the ICRC that guards the conventions, gains backing for IHL, and strives to protect the lives and dignity of victims of armed conflict without discrimination. Not only wounded and sick soldiers, but also prisoners of war and other detainees who are visited repeatedly and for whom the ICRC engages in ongoing dialogue. The ICRC tries to persuade authorities to guarantee and uphold respect for their safety and dignity. Not only civilians directly affected by armed conflict, but also men, women and children deprived of basic necessities as a result of war. Necessities such as water, food, health care, shelter, and clothing. The ICRC, with the help of national societies, also arranges contact between separated family members wherever able and tries to reunite them. Wherever possible, the ICRC is also on the spot to plead the cause of those affected by conflict to authorities, political leaders, and the military 
in order to help protect innocent lives, rights and dignity. There are now more than 180 National Red Cross and Red Crescent societies around the world. They go into action when armed conflict arises in their region. But they also run many other essential activities in peacetime to help the most vulnerable. Red Cross and Red Crescent National Societies are active in four main areas. Disaster response. Disaster preparedness. Health care and first aid in the community. The spreading of humanitarian values and principles. In 1919, the national societies decided to found their own International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. The Federation coordinates the work of the societies internationally, but also helps them launch international appeals for assistance, not only in the case of natural disasters, drought, typhoons, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, floods, but also in the case of other emergencies, such as population movements or socio-economic crises. It also has a mandate to strengthen national societies in order to help them become more effective in assisting those in need. Millions of Red Cross and Red Crescent staff and volunteers are helping to relieve fear, hunger and need at this very minute. Putting into practice Henri Dunant's essential idea.